of this set up the great con, which I will not go into too much detail on, uh, which was he and a corrupt metals dealer got the idea for selling the Nazis on bogus Canadian nickel. Nickel, it turns out, in the 1930s was desperately needed for, for military reasons like lining the insides of guns and armor plating. In fact, if you intended to invade Poland and France, you needed nickel. And Canadian nickel was the only nickel available. However, the Canadians were keenly aware of the number of Canadian soldiers who died in the trenches of World War I from guns fired by Germans lined with Canadian nickel. So it was almost impossible to export Canadian nickel. So Freeman and his partner sent the word out in New York that they had 200 tons of Canadian nickel. And it, they sparked the understandable bidding war. The, the Germans, represented by a fellow by the name of Otto Kafka, Franz Kafka's first cousin, I am the only person who did a book on a grifter who took out of the New York NYU library an academic volume called Kafka's Relatives. <laughs> it's in the bibliography. Uh, and so the whole, so all of them working together created this bidding war for Canadian nickel. But they kept whispering, we can't label this when we export it as Canadian nickel or the Mounties will stop us. So it will have to be Canadian scrap metal. And whenever a question was raised, oh, we're doing this way, they hide what we're doing from the Mounties. Otherwise, they'd find out. Of course, the metal had to be inspected. All that meant was a metal inspector had to be bribed. And Freeman, this entire deal was done with 20 pounds of nickel, not 20 tons. 20 pounds that Freeman bought at a small metal shop in lower Manhattan. This was his constant sample case. It was uh, injected at the top of barrels in Toronto before the, when the barrels were inspected. Ultimately, he had the good fortune. If you're exporting something from Halifax in March and the temperature outside is minus seven degrees, you can have pretty good hope that the cargo will not be closely inspected. Freeman, from his days in vaudeville, knew when to get off stage. So as soon as he was paid $150,000, about two million today, up front, he took off for the Orient. And as when the boat landed in Hamburg, and instead of hard to get Canadian nickel, the Nazis opened up hard to get Canadian rusted tin cans, hard to get Canadian rusted auto bodies, hard to get Canadian discarded brake drums. In fact, the junk metal dealer in Toronto, Pincus Muir, called it his number two bundles. <laughs> he was indicted through the middleman in New York, and we have left him locked up in LA lockup where he spent two months in jail. Uh, he, all of his money, he, back, he was backed by the Hollywood Jewish community who saw him, he portrayed himself as a martyr to the Nazis when he wasn't cl claiming that the Nazis got what they paid for. And if you melt down what I gave them, there's some nickel, nickel in there somewhere. 